So my story is called uh, Red Burn of Redemption. I was a senior in college, and we were a week away from our one-year anniversary. Then I get the phone call. Hugh, we need to talk. Immediately I thought, I'm just not ready for a baby. <laughs> Instead, she dumped me. But everyone gets dumped. That in itself isn't terribly interesting. The interesting part is how you decide to recover. Jumping into the loving yet gentle arms of booze and carb-heavy foods was one option, but I wanted to do something a little more positive. I was going to make myself better, you know, take the old car into the shop for an upgrade. I wanted her to be so jealous she broke up with me that she'd write a country song about it. <laughs> There's several ways you can accomplish this goal. Study harder, go to the gym, get plastic surgery. These options made far too much sense. You see, I made the logical decision to start frequenting a local tanning salon. <laughs> yes, I was convinced that if I got a badass tan, I'd be fighting off women like Charlie Sheen at a no self-esteem conference. <laughs> I'd never been to a tanning salon, nor did I know anyone that had, so I didn't have a lot of information to work off of. I was relegated to searching the bowels of the internet to try and track down some sort of guide to proper tanning etiquette. Sadly, said guide does not exist, so I was required to brave the bright and oily world of tanning alone and uninformed. Up front, I laid out some criteria for my salon choice, the primary caveat being that the door be somewhat hidden from public view. <laughs> this, of course, being so none of my friends could see me walking in. After a week or two of research, I was able to track down a place close to work that I could sneak into unnoticed and earn my red burner redemption. The last obstacle in my road to bronzers and bleach blonde hair was my own courage. You see, under this rough and tumble exterior, I'm actually quite a shy and delicate flower. I kid you not, I parked and walked by the entrance of the salon two or three times before I ever mustered the courage to actually go inside. When I finally gathered the balls to pass through those doors, I was greeted by a friendly lady that appeared to be wearing a cowhide for skin. <laughs> When she asked, have you been to a tanning salon before, she knew the answer already. <laughs> but, since I was so embarrassed about being there, my fragile ego couldn't handle the additional embarrassment of admitting it was my first time. Taking inspiration from a young Mr. McLovin, I stammered and stuttered through my description of the various non-existent tanning salons I had previously visited. <laughs> Rather than save me from the impending comedy of errors, she took my ten dollars, and in exchange handed me a moist hand towel and the strangest piece of eye protection I'd ever encountered. <laughs> she then led me to a numbered room with no instruction and closed the door behind me. <laughs> After taking in the comforting smell of Lysol, I disrobed and closed the lid on my UV coffin. <laughs> when you've willingly placed yourself in a human-sized flavor wave oven, strange things will roll through your brain. Some of the more insightful thoughts that passed through the slowly frying space between my ears were, this must be what bacon feels like. <laughs> and, I hope this doesn't make my sperm retarded. <laughs> the most important question I would have to answer each time I was laying in the tanning bed was what am I going to tell my roommates when they ask where I've been? <laughs> There's only so many times a group of 22-year-old males will believe that you got caught up saving a group of puppies from Mel Gibson lookalikes. <laughs> now, my Mediterranean genetics do allow me to obtain a pretty natural tan, and at first no one was the wiser. Most of my friends were far too obtuse to realize someone should not be getting tanner in the middle of April. <laughs> Problems began to arise when the tanning marks on my back started to bear a, a remarkable resemblance to a drunken zebra. The worst part being that I could only catch short glimpses of my back tan and had not the faintest idea as to the full extent of the damage. Imagine me, boldly walking around the house, shirtless, with a glowing aura emanating from my chest, seeing people in awe as I walked by, only to snicker as I pass them and they take notice of the Jackson Pollock-inspired tan on my back. <laughs> my birthday rolled around, and it seemed like the perfect occasion to show off the special project I'd been working on after hours. The plan was to have a, have a group of friends over for drinks and barbecue, and like a club goer on the Jersey Shore, I'd reveal my new glow and fist pump my way into the hearts of women everywhere. After going through some self-affirmation, you're good enough, you're gold enough, and 
doggone it, there's no turning back now. I ventured out into the party, and let's just say, if things had gone according to plan, I wouldn't be up here telling this story. The sheer embarrassment associated with the unveiling of my new melanoma susceptible skin was a rude awakening. While I thought I'd handled the breakup pretty well, it became clear that I had grossly miscalculated some personal priorities. I came to the realization that I probably have some self-image issues I need to think about. And I, didn't, and I didn't have anything to gain from trying to attract a girl that would date me based on a light bulb tan. While I'd read it before, and sometimes it takes spending an hour or two under a heat lamp, frying like a Big Mac, to make you fully realize that if you just feel comfortable in your own skin, and let the chips fall where they may, everything will be just fine. Thank you.